fish upon a star makes no difference who you are anyone you like to hear will come to you come on everybody here we go let's learn about peter pan and his friends we'll start with wendy darling Wendy can't believe her good fortune at going to Neverland. Peter has been her hero for so long that to meet him and spend time with him is a dream come true. She's fascinated by the mermaids and shows great bravery in the face of Captain Hook's threats. Wendy is flirtatious with Peter and loves the attention he pays her. She doesn't hold a grudge even against Tinkerbell, who is very jealous of Wendy and Peter's friendship. Wendy plays with Wendy plays mother to Peter, the lost boys, and her brothers, John and Michael, in Neverland. As much as she doesn't want to grow up, Wendy eventually reaches a point where she is ready to go home and see her own mother. Did you know that? The original novel, Peter Pan, was written by J.M. Barry. Wendy's name comes from one of J.M. Barry's friends, Margaret Henley. She called him her Friendy, which came out pronounced Fwendy. Now you know! This is John, darling. John is polite and very well-spoken. He is smart beyond his years, but he sometimes forgets that he's not as grown up as he acts and lets his guard down. He is interested in everything and knows many facts. John is particularly interested in pirates and likes to play at being Captain Hook. Adventurous and playful, John also shows himself to be incredibly brave and clever when he comes up against the real Captain Hook. This is Michael, darling. Michael is just along for the ride. He gets caught up in the adventure as long as it's not too scary and as long as he's got his trusty teddy bear. He's even forgotten his real mother. As far as Michael's concerned, he's just another one of the lost boys and Wendy is his mother. <laughs> when playing with his brother, Michael prefers to act the part of Peter Pan. Here is George, darling. Full of bluster and fussiness, Mr. Darling needs a good dose of patience to deal with his imaginative children. He thinks Wendy's fascination with Peter Pan is nonsense and that it's time for her to grow up. But he is also a softy at heart and usually feels bad after one of his outbursts. Meet Mary, darling. Patient and loving, Mary Darling has her hands full with her children and her husband. She is the peacemaker in the family. It is she who insists that Nana will make an excellent nursemaid. And here is Nana. Nana is a good-natured dog who acts as the nanny for the Darling children. Unfortunately for Nana, Mr. Darling finds the idea of a dog taking care of children ridiculous and decides to tie her up outside for the night. While she's stuck outside, Peter sneaks through the darling's window and takes Wendy, John, and Michael to Neverland. Did you know that? Originally, Nana was going to journey to Neverland alongside the darling children and have a comical subplot chasing after Tinkerbell. She also would have been the film's narrator. Now you know. Now, here is Peter Pan himself. Peter is a cocky, self-assured boy who is as adventurous as he is bad-mannered. He likes to give orders, fight battles, and take charge of every situation. The famous boy who never grows up thrives on adrenaline and loves to do battle with Captain Hook. It's become quite a game for Peter, who is never afraid. He is followed by his lost boys, a group of other little boys who do not want to grow up. Peter loves to listen to Wendy's stories, especially the ones about him. Having never had a mother of his own, he takes Wendy to Neverland so she can be his mother and tell him stories every night. Did you know that? Peter Pan was nominated for the American Film Institute's 100 Years, 100 Heroes, and Villains list. Unfortunately, he did not make the final cut. Now you know. Meet Cubby. Cubby is the toughest of the lost boys. He is heavy set and often speaks as if he does not know much. He also wears a bear suit. See? Say hello to Slightly. 
Slightly is Peter's second in command. He is also the oldest and tallest of the lost boys. And he wears a fox suit. Over here is Nibs. Nibs is the most active of the lost boys. He is also one of the quietest and wears a rabbit suit. See? Here is Tootles. Tootles is the youngest of the lost boys. He does not speak at all. Instead, he uses a large pad of paper to communicate and wears a skunk suit. See? Now here is Tinkerbell. Smart, fast, and capable, Tinkerbell is Peter's sidekick. She is coquettish, pouting, jealous, and spiteful, but also caring and protective when it comes to Peter. Tink sends word to the lost boys to shoot down the Wendy bird that is on her way to Peter's hideout. And she is later punished for her jealous nature when Peter sends her away. Tricked by Hook, Tink does everything she can to save Peter before it's too late. And she only speaks in jingles, which the residents of Neverland are able to understand. Did you know that? In 2010, Tinkerbell was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and has become one of the main mascots for the Walt Disney Company and one of its most popular and iconic characters. She has her own spin-off movie series and appears in the opening credits of Disney movies. Now you know. These are the raccoon twins. These two lost boys dress as raccoons and enjoy talking and often finishing each other's sentences. That's Tiger Lily. Tiger Lily is the Indian chief's brave daughter. She's loyal to Peter. She refuses to give away his hiding place even when Hook threatens to drown her. Now, here is Captain Hook, a true villain who is evil through and through. Captain Hook is obsessed with finding Peter Pan and destroying him. This idea rules his life and begins to affect those closest to him, Mr. Smee, his loyal first mate, and his crew of nasty pirates. The only thing Hook fears is the tick-tock of the hungry croc, the crocodile who got a taste of him years ago, when Peter fed Hook's hand to the hungry reptile. Hook never stops dreaming and never stops scheming in his thirst for revenge, and Peter is his ongoing target. Did you know that? During development, the filmmakers realized audiences would like Hook. As a result, they decided the character would not die in the film. He is ranked 24th in Empire Magazine's 50 Best Animated Movie Characters and was used as a reference during the creation of The Princess and the Frogs, Dr. Facilier. Now you know! Over here is Mr. Smee. Mr. Smee is Captain Hook's sidekick and puts up with a lot of abuse. He isn't intentionally mean to Peter and the Lost Boys. He's just loyal to Hook. He believes it's his job to do the captain's bidding no matter what. Absent-minded, bumbling, and jolly, Smee doesn't seem to realize how bad his deeds or those of the captain really are. Smee may be a pirate, but he has a sense of honor and fair play. Warped through it, maybe. The muddled, befuddled old fellow brings decency and comedy to Hook's bloodthirsty crew. When he's not sticking his foot in his mouth, he likes to hum. And this is the crocodile. The crocodile has only one thing on his mind getting Captain Hook. Many years ago, he ate Hook's left hand, and he's been hungry for the rest of the pirate ever since. Luckily for Hook, the crocodile also ate an alarm clock. Now the reptile makes a loud tick-tock, tick-tock noise, which gives him the target warning that he's coming. And those are all of the Peter Pan characters. Join me next time, and we'll take a trip somewhere in Italy and learn about the characters from... Pinocchio.